Hey guys, what's up? It's King Christo here, and today I'm back with pre-built PCs and Power Part 3, the series where I show how much money you can save if you build your own computer. Today I decided to do the Best Buy edition, where I went to bestbuy.com and searched quote-unquote gaming desktop, and started comparing some of the top-selling desktops. I found two good systems for the show, one being more budget-oriented and the other one being on the more expensive side. Now without further ado, let me show you this episode's PCs. First off, we have an $820 quote unquote gaming desktop by HP. It actually looks pretty decent from the outside, but as we know, the inside is what really matters. On the inside, it comes with an Intel Core i5-7400, 8GB of RAM, and a GTX 1060. Now the 1060 is a common place where companies tend to slouch on, as the GTX 1063GB is much less expensive than the GTX 1066GB, but they have the same GPU and name. I looked into this and HP used the 1063GB, which is not a good sign. Now, now listen, don't get me wrong, the 3GB is not a bad card, it's just kind of misleading when companies don't specify which one they use in the product name. It also has 8GB of RAM, which although is fine for games, for multi-threaded applications 16GB would have been preferred. 1TB of storage is enough space given, but with no SSD for fast boot up times I'm kind of disappointed. Even a 120GB SSD would have been nice to have in this build. Finally, it does come with Windows 10. I got to part making and first added the same processor, the Intel Core i5-7400, which comes with the stock cooler used in the HP pre-built for just $170. I then added a featured and high quality H270 motherboard for $80, consisting of all the features the i5-7400 can use. For $60, an 8GB stick of G-Skill RAM running at 2400MHz would work just fine, and isn't some ugly green PCB in your nice looking PC. I had a graphics card consisting of the same GPU, the GTX 1063GB, for $200 by EVGA. For storage, I added a Western Digital Blue 1TB for $50, one of the most reliable drives currently known, and would most likely outperform the hard drive used in the pre-built. The NZXT S340 case is both simplistic and high quality for just $60, providing an easy build experience and aesthetics on par with the HP pre-built. The pre-built didn't specify which power supply is used, which is pretty obvious because most don't. This is because almost every pre-built uses a low-end power supply unit, but I still added a very high-end unit by Seasonic, their 520W M12i for $50. The unit is both fully modular and comes with all black cables for looks, and comes with an 80 plus bronze certification. Finally, I added Windows 10 Pro for $30 by Kingwin for the OS. The total of my custom build came out to around $700. After doing some subtraction, I concluded that we can save about $120 if you build your own PC instead of purchasing a pre-built such as this. This isn't as bad as some other pre-built computers, but it's still a good amount of money which we could spend on other possible upgrades. With that $120, I'd highly suggest adding a small 120GB SSD for around $50 more. Next, with the remaining $70, you could upgrade the GPU to the 1066GB instead of the 1063GB. You could also focus on upgrading something like your monitor or peripherals for the money. So what's my overall opinion? This PC isn't the worst, but it isn't the best either. If you're in a desperate situation, go ahead and do what you want with your money, but I'd still suggest building your own. Oh gosh, why did I have to do this to myself again? For the second build, I decided to go with another Alienware. Needless to say, the Alienware costed $1450. It consisted of an Intel Core i7-7700, a decent processor but not unlocked for overclocking, 16GB of RAM, and a GTX 1078GB graphics card. It also included a 256GB SSD for boot, which I'm thinking finally because at this price point if you didn't have an SSD for boot up uh, I would be really sad and a 1TB hard drive. These specs aren't bad, they're just bad for nearly 1.5 grand. But let's just see what I was able to put together in PC Part Picker. Obviously I added the i7-7700 for $300 as well as the same H270 motherboard I did earlier for $80. For RAM, I went with two sticks of 8GB each, totaling 16GB by team for $135. 
I added a 240 gigabyte SSD for booting by Western Digital for $70, as well as a one terabyte hard drive also by Western Digital for $50 to satisfy the same amount of storage given by the pre-built. I then added an EVGA GTX 1070 8GB for the Win video card, which most likely will have far superior cooling than the video card used in the Alienware. The Fantex B400 case looks almost exactly like the case in the pre-built, so I added it as well as the fact that it has a nice side panel window for $70. A 620 watt M12i PSU by Seasonic would be plenty enough for power, and just like the 520 watt version used in the previous build, it is fully modular and 80 plus bronze certified. Finally, once again I added Windows 10 Pro by Kingwin for $30 as an OS. The total of this build came to a total of $1200. This means you would save a good $250 by building your own PC. This is a lot of money spent just to have the PC built for you. With this money, I would probably upgrade the CPU to the i7-8700 instead of the 7700 due to the addition of two more cores and four more threads, making the 8th generation about 50% better and multi-threaded applications than the 7th gen. Also, I would add an aftermarket CPU cooler for around $40 because the cooler that the i7-8700 or 7700 comes with really is not the best. And so if you want good cooling performance, you're going to have to go with an aftermarket CPU cooler. Finally, I would add a 2TB hard drive instead of a 1TB hard drive by Seagate for $20 more, and so that you can have more storage overall for your games and large applications. With the rest of the money that you save, I'd tell anyone to just spend it on what they think best, as there isn't any major suggestions I would say for the rest of the money. Overall, the Alienware once again isn't the worst I've ever seen, but it's still a pretty bad deal. I hope you all enjoyed this episode of Prebuilt PCs in Peril. If you learned something, definitely let me know in the comment section. My Discord will be linked below if you would like to be part of the KCT community, and my Patreon will be if anyone would like to donate. If you like the video, hit the like button, and if you like the channel, consider subscribing. Without further ado, this is King Christo signing off, and peace out.